So here's my recent Craigslist purchase. It cost me 3200 bucks, but I got three quarters of a Nissan Leaf battery and it's already all taken apart. I mean, that's saving me a bunch of time. And just getting these is saving me time. I docked the guy down from 120 bucks per module down to 85 bucks per module. So basically, this would be the same thing as me buying a bunch of brand new 2500 milliamp hour lithium cells for about a dollar and 20 cents a piece, from my calculations at least quite happy. So we have the big module, one of the smaller modules, which he actually got the battery for one of these modules, so he kept that and I got to buy the rest. And he also threw in all this stuff. Sometimes Craigslist can be pretty fucking awesome. It's not a wonderful deal that I got, but it is an, it's, it's an okay deal. Because these batteries are actually pretty expensive. But the focus of today's video is going to be taking apart this. Because, I mean, cause, hey, I spent 3200 bucks on all this shit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to space it out into a little smaller videos to where I'll have like a video talking about that one, and a video talking about that one, and a video talking about that one. So I say it should be pretty simple. We can just take this one and take the modules off and try not to kill myself. Although this one's only at 90 volts, so that's not too bad. That one's like 160 volts or something, I can't remember, so that one's the one that could kill you. I think for this, I'm going to wear some new gloves. When I went back to Illinois, I got myself like four pairs of new welding gloves, so I have a nice little like supply of them. Well, let's get going. So let's take this and let's turn it around. Using metal tools is not ideal. It'd be best if you could find plastic tools, or at least ones that have covers on them. But hey, I mean, I'll just be super careful and it'll be okay. So we have all this stuff exposed pretty well. We can undo these screws, which are for the balance lathes. It's a good idea to never drop any of, the, any of these screws when you're dealing with this. Just because, well, you're messing with a big ass battery, that's why. So the balance leads are all undone. Now we have to undo these, which is going to be a slight more pain. But so we we'll go with a little one. I wish I had a socket set. A socket set would be great. But you got to do with what you have. Wait, Jay might actually have a socket set. I'll go get that. Aw, oh, sweet! Look at that. Jay did have one. If you're going to do anything with a Nissan Leaf battery, I'd say be sure to check out Benjamin Nelson's channel. He's done some really good videos about this. He actually got a effect trucks to work on it, which is pretty cool. Well, what brought that up in my mind was he discovered that if you accidentally or if you unwittingly take, take out one of these bolts and then you try to undo the other one, sometimes this metal part can come off and break this red housing that we have. So it's best to just loosen the bolt and then loosen the other one. Then when they're both loose, you can take them out. Now, by the way, this is a battery from a 2013 Nissan Leaf. So this is a pretty recent design. I know some other people have gotten some older versions and they have different 
different configurations, it seems, especially with this top part. This top part seems to be cut differently than from the ones I've seen on that other people have. There's a little clip on these, evidently, so these that clip needs to be undone. That's just a matter of like kind of pushing it over a little bit. There we go. All right, I have to take off that. I forgot I was connected there. God damn it. To be honest, though, this should be qu twice as easy. bolt. That's pretty cool. So now we can just take out these and oh it fits. Awesome. Fuck. Some stupid wire connected to the back of it. Wow, this... This housing is definitely very thin. That's... Oh, wow. Don't know how I feel about that. It's pretty cool. Come on, they all have that stupid wire shit on there. Fucking hell. Plug of some sort? God. Thermometer? I don't know. Looks like if you just yank it off, it's okay. No, oh, no. Water on the bottom of that, that's not good. So, these cells seem to be a lot che more cheaply made than previous ones I've seen. Like, for instance, this metal easily bends in, so they're not protected too well, but oh well. Look at that Nissan 500 watt hours, so that's about right. Now, one change compared to the other ones was that I believe the older. Nissan Leaf battery modules had like a lip, kind of like a tin can, to where they'll sit onto each other. But that means that this polarity then matters because you can only set it onto the other ones one way. With this one, you can have whatever rotation you need and just basically have one cell. So you have black, balance, red. Well, if you want to have it like go like this, to where, you, where you go through the battery like that, you can have it like that. Or like this, you can have it where you can have them like in parallel to give you more current or something like that. Without having to worry about getting the right ones. Because I was worried that I would get ones where they were flipped the wrong way and I couldn't use them all. But these ones seem to fix that issue. Judging by the date code on... I can't remember where that was. Right there. Oh, it's uh, September 2012. There's something else. Okay, here's the one. It says January 2013 on there. So yeah, these are a fairly recent battery for getting them out of a junkyard car, you know. So yeah, these batteries are pretty, pretty big. 
I'm pretty scary. I think I'll take a lot of this stuff and just add to the parts bin. if it looks like I want to do five battery modules or five 48 volt battery modules I'll need two of these for each end of course with this one I can just like, cut it down the middle and I have one for each so I actually have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so I'll actually have enough of these like if I even use these ones to mount them all together without having to make my own of these so that's pretty nice because these are a pretty nice shape already. I mean, they're already just, that's what they're designed for. They're designed to go on these. Oh, and these holes are further apart than these holes. That's interesting. Well, I say let's get back to that one and liberate those cells from the metal housing. That's a good number of cells. I like this quite a bit. It's pretty cool. Some pretty strong metal. I wonder what this bit is. It has a wire connected to it. So it looks like it's a some probably for thermal, I don't know. Or impact detection? I don't know. Maybe like if something hits it, it'll detect it. Or moisture? I don't know. There's two wires coming out, though. It's pretty cool. That's pretty much it for now. I think I'm just going to take some of these cells and put them in the shed. But I'll take one cell. And I say let's start doing like a little electrical experimentation with it. I'll get some Ziploc bags and put all the screws and bolts back into the Ziploc bags so I just have them, so I'm have them handy. But I won't keep them on the cells because I believe what I'm going to do is I'm going to put tape over each cell just for storage, you know what I mean? I think it'll be a good idea. Oh, fuck, those are heavy. Much heavier than lithium ion 18650 cells, that's for sure. I figure the only discharger I have with me right now is an IMAX B6. So, let's just use that. I think that's good enough. It should take like a day and a half to fully charge that. That's pretty big. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching. See ya!